just a minute. Check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two. Awesome. Okay, we'll go live. Nice. Okay. Okay. Hey, everybody. I feel like I cannot see you guys. Can you see? Can you see? Okay. So tonight we have my whiteboard here. YouTube, I'll move it over when uh, I get to this point. So don't worry about, I can see that you can only see half of it. Facebook, you can see more of it and I'll bring you guys up when I get to this point. But tonight I've got some demonstrations I want to go through and um, in, in a moment. So we'll get to that in a moment. Baby, you can go ahead and turn it. I'm going to say turn it down. Just turn it off. We're good. We're good. We're good with that. All right. Welcome. Welcome. So my sweet husband is missing. Uh, he is actually um, coming home from being at the prison at Mississippi with Pastor Todd, Marty, and all the boys, Bishop Lance. Um, they had a great service out there uh, ministering to the men who I think sometimes they feel forgotten about. They absolutely feel forgotten about. They had a lot of baptisms in the jail. They were supposed to live stream it, but the warden at the last minute said that, that he wasn't comfortable with that. So we have they respected that. So um, they're on their way back now. He should be home around nine o'clock tonight. So proud of him. I believe he's he. I believe he's really called to um, the prison ministry. Actually, I'll move this over a little bit more. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get things situated for the whiteboard. Maybe that'll be better. Maybe. Okay. So I. It's not heavy tonight. I think it's more informative than it is anything else. I. So when I was praying about how to continue through the seals, I wanted, let me just go this way with it. You guys here know that I talk about finances, cryptocurrencies, and economic issues, along with the end times. And I can't separate them because they, they, they're all, they all mean the same thing. Hello, hello, come in. How are you? Yes, come on in. Bring sweet babies. Absolutely. Hey, baby, you can sit down. You can go along with whatever you want. How are you? So good to see you. So someone asked me, why can't um, we just do separate? Why, why do we have to mix the um, finances, the cryptocurrencies with the return of the Lord? Because that's the book of Revelation. It's an economic, political saga that unfolds in the end times. So back in 2018, when I started getting revelation about digital assets, I wasn't really sure what the Lord was doing. I was like, I don't know what this is. I'm seeing through the glass dimly, Lord. There's something, there's a transition coming, and I don't know. I, I just, I'm going to get involved. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to try to teach it to the people while I'm trying to preach the gospel. It has been like pulling a tugboat in sand ever since. <laughs> It's difficult. Some are very, very receptive, and some have, uh, some are really um, offended. Um, you know, you get called a lot of things, prosperity gospel, you're just trying to fleece the flock, why are you talking about business finance with the gospel, all these weird things. But when you're an end-time preacher, I, there's no other way around it. The, the white horse was, we talked about that last week, it was a pandemic. The red horse is war, communism, all that kind of stuff. The black is def definitely economic. 
And sorry, Facebook, you guys cannot see me. I'm trying my best, trying to get everybody in the frame. And the, the green is a pretty nasty catastrophe that affects livestock, human beings, and a global situation, pandemic like we've never seen one before, worse than CV19. Tonight, we're gonna be talking about economic, the black and green horse. These two, um, they go together. Remember when I said that once these horses are released, they don't stop, right? They keep going. So it's not like we can sit here and have a plan for, okay, whoo, we get a break. One stopped running and now another one starts. No. I want to stress that when the pre-tribulation horses have started, which I am 100% believe that's where we are in time, I believe that they have. I believe um, we're going to talk about the 6,000-year timeline. We're going to talk about the Shemitahs again before I go into the black and green horse to kind of review of the time that we're in. But I believe that the black and green um, are working together, and they all ride together, and they don't stop till the Lord returns. So it's really just a layer upon another layer upon a la another layer upon another layer of hell. Can we just say that? Just hell on earth. All right, so that's a summary. Let's go ahead and pray it out. Lord Jesus, Father, put your words into my mouth tonight, Lord Jesus. Father, we honor you. We worship you. Lord, you are worthy of it all. You are my king. You are our king. Father, you are coming, and you're coming soon. We believe that. I preach that, Lord Jesus, and we look forward to your return. That is our hope. For in Titus, it says it is our hope for your return. That is the whole point. That is the whole purpose. You coming to receive your bride. And Father, we, we cannot wait. Jesus, we cannot wait to see our groom. We're so excited. Father, help me preach and teach this correctly so it's beneficial to the people, so that it will not provoke fear, but it will provoke, you know what? I know how to get prepared. Father, use this as preparedness, because that's why you wrote it down. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we love you and honor you. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and review Revelation 5. Let's start with scripture. Let's just review what it says. Uh, actually, it's Revelation 6. Excuse me. Um, we're going to start in verse 1. Next I watched as a lamb broke the first of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living beings saying in a thundering voice, Go. And I looked, and there in front of me was a white horse. Its rider had a bow and was given a crown, and he rode off as a conqueror to conquer. Now, who did we say last week was the white horse? What did we say about that? We said it was CV19. There's a lot of um, uh, terms. There's a lot of... Um, information just in that one but two sentences of the white horse that pins down what we went through in 2020 down to just like bam we marked it the second horse is red so when he broke the second seal i heard the second living living being say go and another horse went out a red one and its rider was given the power to take away from the earth and make the people slaughter each other. He was given a great sword. So this is a red horse. This is war. This is Marxism. This is bloody. This is something. And remember what I said last week. All of the pre-tribulation seals, they're global issues. They're not American issues. They're not Middle Eastern issues. They're not Israeli issues global issues that's what we have been looking for and that's what we are seeing it's not affecting just one group of people it's affecting the globe okay these horses are riding around the globe so from 2020 from the white horse riding it was about three and a half years before we had russia invade ukraine and it hasn't stopped because the year after that then israel got hit by hamas okay next one is the black horse when he broke the third seal, I heard the living being saying, go. And I looked there in front of me was a black horse and its rider held in his hand a pair of scales. Then I heard what sounded like a voice from among the four living beings saying, two pounds of wheat for a day's wage, six pounds of barley for the same price, but do not damage the oil or wine. We should kind of get, even if you don't really understand the language here, you should kind of understand this is economic. We've got scales, we're talking about food, and we're talking about wages, okay? This is economic, this is dealing with our money, and this is dealing with how we're going to survive in this time. 
After the black horse, it's still not done. All right, if things couldn't get any worse, now we have a green horse that will ride. So when he broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living being saying, go. And I looked there in front of me, was a pale, sickly looking horse, pale green, green horse. It's the, I think the Greek word is chloros, and they get that, you know, chlorophyll from the plants, green. Its rider's name was Death, and she all followed him. And they were given the authority to kill one quarter of the world by war, by famine, by plagues, and by the wild animals of the earth. So it's kind of like all in one combined. Okay? So we're going to talk about the last two. Now, in order for me to get back up to the seals, we talked about Daniel's 70 week. We talked about there's one week missing. And we talked about how do we know that we're there right at, at the, almost at the seventh week of Daniel. So last week, I went through the Shemitahs. Let me see if I can get you guys closer to my little board here, my whiteboard, YouTube. And I know it's kind of small, guys. I'm working with what I have. But last week, remember, guys, we talked about how the Jews break up their time in seven-year blocks, okay? So this is how they and this is how the Lord uh, measures time. So he takes one block of seven years, and he calls them Shemitah years. And this has been going on since the beginning of time, since Adam. All right, they're Shemitah years. All right, now that we establish how we measure, God measures time, we'll get right back to that, because I'm going to take you to this as we go into what we're heading into. But I want to talk about Adam's six-day work week, Okay. Adam's man, time was measured out for man. Let me get over here so you guys can see me on camera. All right. Time was measured out for man at the very beginning. So I remember how I always said I gave you an illustration that the Lord holds time like this. He can see the end from the beginning. Okay. Adam was given a six day work week. What does it say in the Bible? A thousand years is of a day and a day is of a thousand years. That's to the Lord. Okay. Okay. The Lord created the heavens and the earth in how many days? Seven or six. And he rested on the seventh day. So we're going to take that measurement, and this is Adam's six-day work week per thousand years. Now, from the time of Adam, from the time of man, up until now is about 6,000 years. We all can agree on that. All theologians agree on that. Now, there's debate on how old the world is. That's a totally different sermon from a different day. I really do believe the earth is millions, billions of years old. I do. It's just that man was created 6,000 years ago. Okay? That's, that's my personal opinion. I believe that there was something going on pre-Adam. Different sermon for a different day. It had to do with Lucifer. So Adam was created. All right? These are the days of chaos. A thousand years, two thousand years brings us up to Moses. Moses was given the law. Then we have a thousand, another thousand, another thousand. Okay, and right in the middle, Jesus came. Then we have the church age, which is the last two thousand years. So it's broken up into two thousand, two thousand, two thousand. Everybody kind of getting it? Adam was created the days of chaos. Okay, Noah, all of that, Nephilim, everything was created in these 2,000 years. It was crazy. It was chaos. The earth is flooded. Then we have the days of the law, the Torah, the five books of Moses, okay, where the Lord gave all of that, David, Moses, that was 2,000 years. Bam, we have the Messiah. He came. Daniel was before that right here in three and four. We have the Messiah that came. And then we have the latter days, which is the church age, which is all of those books in Revelation when they talk about, you know, the Laodicean church, the church of Sardis. Okay, those are all church ages within the church latter days. We are here on the sixth day in time. This is where we are. We are in the 6,000 years of man. Okay, and time was created for man. Right here is the Sabbath, which would be the seventh day, and this is the millennial reign of Christ. We are right on the edge of the kingdom of God coming. The rapture of the church and the tribulation is right here between the millennial reign and where we are right now. Okay? 
This is where we are. All right, so let's go back to this chart here. And this is our Shemitah chart. You guys, I know it's really far away, but I'm going to talk you through it, YouTube and Facebook. So we are in a Shemitah year cycle right now. It started in 2022. The Shemitah cycle before this started in 2015, and it ran all the way to 2022. We had CV19 this year right here. The Shemitah year right here. From 2015 to 2022, seven years, this was the first seal that was popped. We are now in the second Shemitah, 2022-2030, and this will run all the way seven years to 2029. It starts over on Rosh Hashanah, and that's going to take us to 2030 to 2037, and then that ends this Shemitah block. I do not believe personally, guys, that Jesus will come and rapture us at any time. I believe he's going to rapture us because he has a reason and he has festivals, and he does things on time and his timing. His return, in my opinion, is going to have to be on one of these feast days at the end of a Shemitah year. He doesn't do anything out of order. Everything is done on blocks. He has a system to man. Do you see how this goes? He is very, very system. He's very organized. He knows exactly when he's coming back, and all of this is lining up to where I'm about to go now. All right, so recap. Adam was given a six-day work week. Six days. These 6,000 years was, is the time allotted to man, and we're at the end. We're at the 6,000 year of man right now. Could it be an extra 100 years, 200 years? I, I really, in my opinion, this is not Bible where that says the Lord. No, I don't think so. I do not think we have that much time left. We are at the end. We are right at the end, at the end of the church age and the beginning of the kingdom age, which is the ruling and reigning of Christ. We get raptured before that, but we're there. We also discussed the seven-year cycle Shemitahs that we just went over. Now, after the red horse, okay, after the red horse, which we talked about last week, let me remove these. And we're going to get to the banking system and we're going to get to cryptos here in just a second. After the, the red horse, so we had 2020 to 2023, a global pandemic, global. Three and a half years later, from 2023, now going into 2026, if we are still on the same timeline, war has to continue. If war stops and there's peace, well, we have to start the time over. I'll just, we just will. But right now, I don't see that happening. Right now, we're on track to continue war. And another three and a half years takes us into 2027 to 2030. And we've got an economic famine, hard times. The black horse will be economic. And the possible causes will be this. The dollar devaluation. Other nations dumping the dollar, which we're already seeing. Saudi Arabia making deals with Russia and China to not buy oil in dollars, but to use their own currencies. We've all, they've already talked about it. It's already happening. We just haven't seen the issue over here yet. I can't even imagine because we're already so hyperinflated. We can't take much more. Uh, other issues, too much money printing, which we've been doing for decades and decades. The invasion on our southern border. We're being invaded. It's not an immigration issue. It's a straight-up invasion. Purposeful. We can all agree to that. We see it. We know what's happening. And it's not just coming from Mexico. We've got China flooding in. We have Middle Easterns flooding in. We have Mexico, yes, flooding in. We have the Southern Americas flooding in. Or a pandemic, just like we had in 2020, where nobody wants to touch dollar bills. I mean, I had a, my own personal story when that was all going on. I honestly, guys, in the throes of it, I kind of forgot that we were, we were in it because I never bought a, a mask, not one time. If I wore a mask, it was because uh, it was mandated. And I would say if I walked into a store, well, if you're going to mandate it, then you got to give me one. And they always would have one. So I didn't buy one. I thought they were nasty. I didn't want it on my face. 
So it's half the time I would forget that we were in one. And I remember going to Starbucks and I remember getting a coffee and all I had was cash. And I reached out to give the lady um, my cash to get my coffee. And she's like, oh, 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 no, just take, just take the coffee. I don't, you can keep the cash. It's free. It's free. And I'm like, this is so bizarre. People were so afraid. They had so much fear. They were so afraid that if you weren't wearing a mask or if, even, if you even sniffled or if you even coughed, even if you were 10 feet away, they looked at you like they wanted to kill you. That's how afraid they were, that you were the problem, right? So it would only take another one worse than that one for us to totally, globally dump paper assets that we use to exchange at stores, right? Okay. Now, this horse will cause the extinction of the middle class, and I'm about to go there. This horse that's going to ride. So we will have the poor, and we will have the super elite. There will be no middle. This is why the Bible tells us that the scales and food, or just a little bit of food, bread, wheat, is going to cost days wages. For the elite, that's nothing. For someone who, who has multi-millions up to billions, that ain't a thing. I don't care. It's a drop in the bucket for me if I'm a billionaire. But for someone who's middle class, there's no way they will be able to be ever able to sustain that. Even if they had somewhat of a fluff, right? They will eventually become to nothing. There will be no middle class. This is what the Bible is saying. When the black horse rides, it will be poverty like we've never seen it against absolutely super, super, super wealthy. There's no in the middle. None. Now, prophecies to back this up, we've had many. Let's just go through some of them that are over decades old, guys. Decades old. We have John Paul Jackson. Okay, over 15 years ago. Now, John Paul Jackson died, I think, in 2014, 15 maybe? Maybe right after Bob Jones, because Bob Jones died in 2014. So maybe John Paul Jackson died in 2015. But he was a seer. He saw the merging of Mexico, the United States, and Canada's currencies. Now, this was 15 years ago. Something happened to where it was almost like the euro. We had to merge these countries' currency together because ours was not buying anything, okay? He saw craft food trucks having guards on them. So when they would pull up to unload, there were security guards on the food trucks. This was 15 years ago. He called these series of headlines that he saw back in 2012, he called them the perfect storm because that's what the Lord told him. He said, it's not just one thing that's going to cause this. It's going to be multiple things. It'll be political. It'll be weather. It will be um, food crisis. It will be war. It will be, pan it will be the perfect storm. Interesting. Here comes Chris Reed 15 years later. And now he is the lead pastor at Morningstar with Rick Joyner. He has a dream two years ago of headlines given to him on the street. The headlines were a few things, but I just want to address a few of them. One of them um, was this, this devaluation of the dollar. Then he had a, a subsequent dream where he saw the dollar bill being ripped in thirds, then ripped in half, then ripped into tiny itty bitty pieces. Then all of a sudden the dollar just started floating like leaves in the wind. It was worthless. He had no idea about John Paul Jackson's dream 15 years prior. So the Lord, out of the, this is now the second confirmation. Third confirmation happened this year from another prophet seer that nobody knows about. And remember how I told you that the nobodies will start to rise up who have been serving, who have been in the secret places, who nobody knows, cleaning bathrooms, serving for 10, 15 years at church. Nobody knows who they are, and yet they have all of this revelation. Angels are appearing to them because they got humble hearts. Remember me saying that? This is one of them. Brandon from the last days, you can look him up on YouTube, started the YouTube in June, hasn't even been on YouTube for not even hardly six months. Well, now it's more than six months, but when I saw him, he had only been uploading his dreams and visions for about five months, and he had already had 100,000 subscribers. That's God. That's God. 
That means that's the, the Lord says in the Bible, your gift will make room for you because now's his time. He was a janitor at Kenneth Copeland's church for 15 years. And he would be praying while cleaning those toilets. Lord, why do I still got to do this? You said I was a preacher and I'm still cleaning toilets. Nobody sees me. Nobody talks to me. He kept cleaning those toilets, him and his wife. Angels started appearing to him. He saw a vision of the tribulation down to the detail of what it will look like. He gets these visions. He gets open visions, night visions. And he doesn't have a congregation, so where does he put them? On YouTube. He also had to stop going to church because his daughter has autism. And she would make so much noise in the congregation, they would ask him and his wife to leave. Yeah. He saw Mexico, the United States, and Canada merge in money. I almost hit the floor when I saw his video. He had no idea who John Paul Jackson was. No idea who Chris Reed was. And here he was having the same visions as these two men. This is confirmation number three. He described it as something like the euro. He saw the dollar dropping in value, in value very fast. Faster than any of us could uh, fathom. Faster than we could get money out of the stock market. Faster than we knew what we could do with our money as if we were watching it just plummet. Okay? That's the black horse. That's what they're seeing. They're seeing 2027, in my opinion, to 2030, the black horse riding. Now, I think it's going to start before 27. I think we're going to start seeing the throes of this, guys, before 27. I think we're going to see it at the end of this year start popping off. Okay? So let me do this. We need to prepare spiritually and we're going to prepare physically. And this is what I started off with um, before I started preaching about I cannot separate the two. I can't separate teaching cryptocurrencies and digital assets and money and, and, and the return of the Lord. I can't. And I have to prepare the ones that listen to me what the Lord has told me. Because he wants us to be prepared about what to do. Because if we're not prepared about what to do, we can't even feed ourselves, much, much less the harvest. Okay? We're not going to be able to, to um, survive and, and, and occupy till he comes if we're not wise. This is what the Lord was talking about before his return. There was ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. Now, if you don't get this, if you don't get any of this, it doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. It doesn't mean you're not a Christian. It means you're going to suffer. Right? But the Lord gave us prophets. He gave us his word. His word is the number one. But he backs it up with his prophets. So what's the Bible say? He does nothing until he tells his prophets first. They're us. They're for tools for us. It's not for us to be jealous over them. It's for us to go, okay, thank you, Lord. You have a mouthpiece. I got it. Right? But I see so much bickering and so much jealousy and competition. Are you kidding me? They're tools from heaven. Let's listen to what they say. Who cares? Their giftings are pretty cool. Seeing angels and stuff, I want to see that too. And I think we all can. But certain people have certain mantles and we need to listen. Especially when we have three different prophets from three different decades saying the same thing. Almost down to like the detail. Okay? All right. Now, where's my eraser? All right. So we got this. We've got 2020 to 2023, we had a global event that lasted three and a half years, unlike we've never seen before, okay? 2023 to 2026, this red horse is riding, okay? Along with, with this CV situation, it's still here, but they now turned it back to the flu. Y'all get that, right? Because remember, where'd the flu go? It disappeared. But now the flu's back. But it was gone for three years, right? Okay, so it's still here. But that white horse is still riding. Okay, so now we've got 2023, we started war, and we're gonna, that red horse is going to ride, and these are going to continue to ride. When we hit 2025, this economic, the climax of this black horse, this economic situation, the turning of our monetary system to a new system, this is going to run us to 20, 2030, okay? All right, let me erase this real quick. We'll leave the green horse. We'll leave the green horse for right now. Because I want to get to the bank up here.
And if you're just jumping on, guys, you really need to go watch the beginning where I talk about the seven Shemitah block years and Adam's six-day work week for you guys to really understand where this timeline is coming from. That's really, really going to help you. Okay. All right. We're going to talk about now. It is 2025. All right. And now we have this. We have a crypto versus C, B, D, Cs. You're like, what in the world is CBDCs? I know what crypto is maybe, but what are CBDCs? CBDCs are frightening. This is where it's headed. You guys know what crypto is, right? Yes. Okay. So these are the digital assets on the blockchain. Every single thing is about to get tokenized. Your real estate, your cars, the bank, every contract, everything is about to get tokenized. Everything. Okay? Cryptocurrency is friendly to us. It is a decentralized situation for the customer. Decentralization means nobody owns it. It's, you can see all transactions true, but there's no centralized bank or centralized person that owns a cryptocurrency. CBDCs, quite the opposite. CBDCs are scary. These CBDCs are centralized, which means they can control, they can take away, they can turn off, your money at, at any will that they want. This is where the whole world is going. China already tried to implement this, and it was awful. But the government said it was good, but to the people it was awful. This crypto is happening before CBDCs. Although the CBDCs are happening right now behind the scenes, and the banks and the government are not talking about it. Why? Because they're building it. This right here, this crypto situation, this is your ticket out until you have to do this, CBDCs. They're both digital. One is decentralized, one is centralized. One is good, one's an absolute nightmare. All it takes is one cyber attack. All it takes is one global pandemic worse than what we went through for nobody to wanna touch dollars, Nobody want to touch paper. Nobody want to touch coins. And we and they flip the switch. CBDCs. Okay? All right. We got that. Now, where is the crypto? Leave the CBDC. Now, notice we're still in 2025. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this in a second. All right? Because this transition from the system that we know now from the dollars to an absolute CBDC situation is going to take a couple years. Go ahead, Betty. It's fine. It's not going to, it's, it's going to have to evolve. People are going to have to, but as it evolves, it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Okay. All right. Now we'll leave CBDCs. Are y'all following me? This is interactive. If you don't get it, tell me, because I want you guys to get it. I want you guys to understand this here. We can talk about it more often, but I want you guys to get this. All right. Cryptos, CBDCs. All right, they're different. Cryptos is our friend. CBDCs is an absolute nightmare from hell, okay? But it doesn't matter if we don't like it. They're doing it anyway. It don't matter how much we hate it. It's about control, okay? It's a global situation. Just like Schwab said, you'll, you'll own nothing and you'll love it. That's what they want. They want us to own nothing and they're trying to convince us that we'll love it. This is nothing more than Bible. This is a global economic problem that the Bible says was coming. How do you control people? You control food, water, monetary systems, right? If you want to control the people, you control the food. If you want dominion, you control the money, okay? They start with the food first, then they work their way up. Okay, making sure you guys can still see me. This here, XRP and the banks. 
If you do not know anything about cryptocurrency at all, buy this. This is not financial advice. I'm just telling you by the spirit, this here is the bridge to your generational wealth. I said generational wealth. This is your bridge to get out of the CBDC hellhole that they want to put us all in. Once the CBDCs are active, okay, the only problem that they're going to have is cross-border payments between different nations. This technology right here is the only thing that can bridge all of these currencies. It's a bridge, okay, among the nations. The banks, all of them, Citibank, Bank of America, all of them have picked up this technology, have picked up Ripple XRP, and they are integrating it into all of their systems because soon they're going to just come online with it. And whoever holds the custodian of this will never have to operate in CBDCs. Do you hear me? This is how you go from the elite to the poor. Now, let me tell you something scary about CBDCs. CBDCs, this digital money here, when China rolled it out, it was a airdrop. Here you go, free money. Here's 20 grand, 30 grand, or however much they gave their people. But you got one year to spend it, and it starts over. Aren't we nice? The problem with that is, is that you always stay poor. You can't ever save money. Because the moment you save and you save, and all of a sudden it's December, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm almost close to getting a house. I've saved. Boom starts over. You'll never get out of the hole. You'll never get out of the pit. You'll never get out of the working class. That's their plan. That's the black horse. Unless you have multi-millions to buy bread and wheat that's worth one day's wage where it doesn't even matter to you, you're like, I don't care. I mean, I have more money than I can spend. Let me buy the, let me buy the food. Unless you have that kind of wealth, you're going to starve. Because they're going to keep you very, very restricted. Like Swab says, you're going to own nothing and you're going to love it. How evil and wicked. Yeah. Right? All right. So we have CBDCs. All right. This is going to be the poor man's currency. This is what you're going to have to buy and use in your stores, in your grocery stores, whatever. Whatever they choose the CBDC is. Just think of CBDC as just digital digital currency, just a digital dollar, which basically that's what we have anyway. We still kind of have cash, but that's slowly dwindling away. But right now, everything's digital. Right now, everything is running on the blockchain and the banks. It's just that they don't talk about it. It's all integrating over. Okay. It only takes one cyber attack away for them to flip the switch, which what happened yesterday with at and I mean, if you, if you have eyes to see, you'll see that they're already trying this with us. Before the 2020 pandemic, what happened? What did I tell you that happened to me in 2018? They try ran this thing with the flu shot. And it worked brilliantly. You either take it or you're fired. 98% of the people lined up to take it. Why? Because they held their jobs over their head. They held food over their head. They always trial something before the big one. Always remember that. Mm -hmm. Always trial something before the big one. All right. XRP today is 50 cents. It's not going to stay there long. Mm -hmm. Once the entire world is in this, we're talking about trillions of dollars. XRP to 25,000. It'll be like a Bitcoin but it'll be the asset of the billionaires. It'll be, it won't be something that you want to sell for dollars because dollars don't exist. It'll be something that you hold. Okay, think of yourself. If you, if you hold the majority of this, the swift, the bridge, the bridge, XRP bridging, all right? The cross-border payments of nations. If you hold, a, if you're a custodian of this, you don't ever have to sell it. You're, you're earning interest on it. And people, nations, are coming to you to lend them money for the house, for the loans. 
So it's not that you're going to sell XRP for dollars. You're going to be the custodian of it. In turn, you're making more than you could ever, ever spend in these CBDCs. Because by holding XRP, you are making the interest in the CBDCs. Do you see where this is going? So whoever holds the majority of, this is like the key, the gatekeeper. Okay, this in the bank, this is, this is going to be the bank. This technology here, XRP. All right? The bank, this old system is going away. The bank and how they do things, which is a fraud anyway, it's disappearing. They're going completely this route. And they're doing it behind the scenes, BlackRock, Fidelity, they're buying it all up before the common people, before us paupers get it. This is why I was teaching this in 2018. I knew it was coming, I just couldn't see it clearly. I knew it was headed digital and I knew it was blockchain, but I couldn't see clearly. I didn't know what one of the what what are the what the four million of them would that would they choose. It's this one. Buy it. If you do nothing else, just buy it and keep buying it until you you just keep keep going. Okay. So banks are going to use XRP. It'll be. It'll be like XRP. It'll be like this, the assets, like the, the minerals, the silvers, the golds, the coppers. It'll be new energy. Cold fusion. All right. Um, I know that none of us like this new green stuff that they're pushing, but it doesn't matter if we don't like it. They're doing it anyway. Buy into it. Buy into it. We're headed to a cashless society. And what's even going to push this cashless society is the green horse. All right. So from 2025 to 2027, expect a brand new way that we live and do monetary exchange. I'm about to show you a timeline. Before I, When I close tonight, I'll show you a timeline of this year that the Lord's been downloading to me in my spirit of how it's going to look just for this year. Okay. But this is going to go on for a couple years until it completely transitions. So there's going to be a couple years for you guys and for us to get established in this new system and be the head and not the tail. All right. The green horse goes in with the black horse because there's no way to go completely cashless unless there's a reason to tell the people to do so. Because we have so many baby boomers. We have so many others that are used to the old system. The 401ks, the cash. They have it under their mattresses, right? There's got to be another way for them to push the new system on these people. And not only did some, like I think it was, I don't know who it was. Maybe it was Brandon. One of them saw them actually burning money. Now, why would you burn money instead of shred it? Right now, the Fed shreds money if we have too much which is crazy because they just keep printing. They love having too much. But their practice is shredding. Why would we burn it? It's worthless. Plagues. Nobody wants to touch it. Oh. It's dirty. That's the only way you get rid of it. Is there something is tainted. There's something wrong with it. People are dying. No, no, no. Your coffee's free. Your co Here, take your coffee. It's only three bucks. I don't need that cash. No, it's free. It's on us. Mm -hmm. I don't want to use that. You, know, you don't have a card? Oh, no, ooh, no. That's what she literally told me, the girl at Starbucks, when we were going through this. I was like, free coffee, thank you, weirdo. I'll keep my $3. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but it's ridiculous, right? But there, but there is something coming that is worth, it'll make that, what we went through, look like grandma's tea party. There is, but that, that one will be serious, it will. They're already talking about it. It's called disease X. Why are they talking about it? Why is who talking about it? Why? Why are they preparing for this mystery thing if something's not already in the works? Because it is. They're telling you it is. Like, that's their, like, way of saying, well, we kind of told them by not telling them. That's how those sicko elite people are. They're wicked. They're evil. It's coming, and they're already ready. Disease X is what they're calling it.
2030 to 2034, three and a half years of sickness, death, and all of these. And all of these seals, one through four, are all global. They're global. They're not just, they're not just um, sanctioned off to just different nations. When you start, this is what I told y'all last week, and this is what I preach on my platforms. When you start seeing things that are global issues, and they continue to be global issues. Like it doesn't, it's just not just one global issue. We don't hear anything for 10 more years. It's a global issue. We don't hear anything for 15 more years. When they continue to be global issues, you should look and go, oh my gosh, we are really biblical right now. Let me go and search this out and figure out what's going on. Is this it? Is this it? Okay. Now. Let me put my little Shemitah sign back up here. Okay. So, I well, can't see it, but I'll talk you through it. All right. So now we're in 2022 to 2030 Shemitah. We are actively living this right now. Remember how I keep referencing, um, referencing Tommy Ariomi's vision from the angel that said, Tommy, you tell the church they have nine years. That was back in 20, 2021. He got that from the angel. Tommy, you have nine years. Not nine years till the Lord returns, but nine years to the church and the world and how we live as we know it is not recognizable. Now we have six. And this lines up with what I'm telling you, with the three and a half years and the 2026 to 20, it's all lining up. Even the Shemitah calendar, here we are from 2022 to 2023, we're right here in the second year of the Shemitah, one, two, three, four, five, six is 2030. Church, you have six years left. To what? Prepare. Not to die, we're not going there, we're not being that way. We're going to be wise as doves, wise as serpents, gentle as doves. Yeah? I said it backwards. Not afraid. We're not going to be cowards. We're going to be wise virgins. We've got six years to get our money in order. Get our houses in order. Get where you need to be geographically. Okay. Six years takes us up to 2030. Now, when did I say that the green horse should ride? If we're, if we're staying at three and a half years, the green horse should be riding by this next Shemitah year, 2030 to 2037. Hell on earth. Just hell. Why? Because we've already had three other horses go out before the green horse. We've still got the, the white one running around. CV, flu, whatever. We still got the red one running around. All the nations are fed up with one another. Fed up. They're all fighting. Everything's broken. It is just a mess. They're just fed up with one another. That's still happening. Now we've got an economic crisis. The dollar is no longer valuable. People can no longer afford to buy anything. Things are changing. Digital stuff is coming online. Now we're going to have a green horse that's riding. That's really going to kill all monetary dollar bills whatever paper, whatever your country is, if it's not dollar, yen, shekel, whatever. Nobody wants to touch it. So now we're fully active with the CBDCs and now we're all, and now everyone's sick. You don't, you don't have any money to move. You don't have any money to go wherever, right? Because you weren't prepared. All right. Let's talk about this year. All right, so we have, we're in February. We're going to take it to December. Can y'all see? All right, so we're in an election year, and right now we have, I want you guys to keep your eye on the cryptocurrency market. That's your main goal right now. The cryptocurrency market, I'm getting, I had a dream about the month of April. I had a big dream about this. Something's going to happen around Passover for the church, for the good. We also, remember what I said last week, we also have a total lunar eclipse that's happening 
on that same month that is crossing the United States. And the craziest thing about it is it's happening on a feast day. Remember I said you got to watch these lunar eclipses and total eclipses when they fall on feast days for one. For two... It crosses like nine or maybe over 10 cities called Nineveh. You cannot make this up. The Lord tells us in the Bible that he speaks to us through his, through the heavens. Are we, are we paying attention anybody? Okay. Something's happening here in April for the good, for the saints, bad for the wicked. I believe judgment starts here, but I also believe the gifts and the mantles start falling here. Which track are you on? We got two tracks, right? It's the it's the um, good and terrible day of the Lord. Okay, all right. So after April, we are going to start hearing, you know, interest rates. They're going to start talking about, oh, let's drop them. Let's drop interest rates. We're dropping interest rates through the summer. Now we've got cryptos exploding, exploding, exploding. Money's flowing in. Money's flowing in. Everyone's always oh, going to go up forever. Oh, we're all making a bunch of money. And then we get into the election. We get into the election. And we start seeing it flipping towards some guy named Trump. We're going we're gonna to get hung up here. We're going to get hung up in October and November. Something's not going to be all that great in October and November. I personally feel as if we're not going to know who won for a little while. Okay, it's going to get kind of dark and dicey because I think they're going to they're going to try to take this again. Okay, I believe this this month right here, guys, December of this year. Keep your eye out on the Christmas holiday. I believe that's when we're going to have, and you know, we all see, we all see through the glass dimly. We do. Okay. But there's something going on in December with the markets. That's going to be devastating. And I, I'm worried about my parents. I'm worried about my grandmother. I'm worried about the old, the people who have it in the old system. I'm worried about it. Mm -hmm. And I, and I want you to pray about what the Lord wants you to do. Cause I cannot tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. I just know I can tell you what I've seen and I can tell you what the Lord's taught me about the digital assets and this new monetary system that he that I've been teaching since 2018. It's finally here. Okay? Come December, I think that we're going to go into a very dark 2025 for the ones who weren't prepared. But the ones that were prepared, you're going to be at peace. You prepare here. Put it here. Start looking at the new energy. Start looking at cold fusion. Start looking at water. Start looking at the things that you know, unfortunately, people are going to need. Because you have to retrain your brain. The Lord was teaching me this. What is money? It's people's needs. What do people need? They need food. They need housing. They need fuel. They need energy. This is money. Stop thinking dollar bills. The Lord taught me not to think dollar bills years ago. Think about what the needs are of you and the people and you put it there. Now, there is a good side to this. Obviously, there's not such a good side to this because you have to remember during these times going into the return of the Lord and these pre-tribulation seals that are opening and things are starting to change, where you may be, and I'm decreeing and declaring on that on all of us, on the better side, joyful, excited side of his return, there's going to be a lot of people suffering. All right? It's not going to be like live your best life now. It's going to be like, oh, my gosh, I have to help. Because they, they had no idea it was coming. 
no idea. It's, it's almost like it's hard to enjoy, although we do have joy, hard to enjoy your blessing when you see a baby starving. Mm -hmm. And not just one globally. This is where I think this 2025 time frame, this is why I'm so still stuck on the Trump situation and him not being done. Because there's no way that we can get a currency merge between Canada, Mexico, and the United States if something catastrophic hadn't happened to where he has to figure out how to fix it. It'll never be like it was, but he can get downloads from heaven to get it back to where it's okay and we're, we're, we're walking on our two feet again. Something has to happen for us to be like a euro, merging with other nations Something has to happen to our monetary system. And if three different people, and they're just the three I picked out, there's way more than this that have seen this situation happen. Okay? So when are we going to start believing them? We have to. We have to be the head and not the tail. Okay? Now, does anybody here have any questions about any of this banking stuff? It can get pretty technical, but I try to explain it the, the easiest way I can. Anybody got any any? Yes. Yes, honey? You know, you know how you said, like, eventually, like, there'd be no more money anymore, like, cash and stuff? How would we, like, turn that but into, like, the other money? So money doesn't disappear. Money just changes hands. Always remember that. So, like, in the Great Depression... <laughs> Does anybody know why the 401k was created? Does anybody know? Because after the Great Depression, nobody was investing into the stock market. So the government created a way to get money back into it. So they created the 401ks. So that money could come in, so that Wall Street could trade. It's been corrupt since the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. You can have your own opinion, and we're still going to heaven. I'm just telling you, be careful. Be careful. I always found it very, very upsetting to me that I couldn't get to something that was mine when I wanted it when I wanted it. You had to jump through a thousand hoops to get it. You were taxed such at a high rate to get it. And you had to basically beg for your money. I always had an issue with that. No, I'm okay. I don't, I don't need that. I'll invest it where I want to invest it and so I can get to it when I want to get to it. Just be wise is what I'm telling you. Because when you have, when you have, when you are a custodian of something that is leverage, like the XRP, because it's a bridge to a bridge currency to the rest of the nations when CBC, CBDCs go live, the XRP is what's going to be backing the value of the CBDC. And the reason is, is because when you're dealing with it like Bitcoin, there's only so many made. That's why everyone likes it. That's why it has such a high value because there's only like so many million that are going to be minted and will never, ever be able to be minted. So like there's it's fractional. And so the price keeps going up because everybody wants a piece of it. You can't print anymore, right? Same with the XRP. It's going to hold the value of the CBDCs. So if you don't have any XRP, the bridge currency, and you're just getting funded the CBDCs, you're just not going to make it. However that's going to look. I said a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. I know. Um, it's really, it's, it's hard to talk about. Um, when you're talking about people's money and it's always been difficult for me because I preach the gospel and here I am talking about people's money but the Bible talks about people's money. <laughs> I mean, the Lord tells us, look, you got to get smart. I'm telling you what's ahead and I'm telling you that I want to bless you and I want you to be the lender and not the borrower but you're going to need wisdom and you're going to need to have understanding. Because what's wisdom if you don't understand what you know? What's wisdom when you don't know how to implement it? Right? Yeah? Okay. 
Lord, is there anything else you want me to discuss with this? Anything that I missed, Lord? Anything you want me to bring up? Dogs, you can go ahead and transition. I gave them a lot of meat tonight. I'm just going to pray for a second and see if there's anything the Lord wants me to say. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anything else? Thank you, Lord. Most importantly, I don't want anybody to ever be in fear about the times that we're in. The Lord was very clear that this is the great and terrible day. And I just want you guys to focus on the great. Because he's going to show you the way. You know? And you're going to get just what you need to fulfill the assignment that the Lord has put on your life. Will there be people that have more than another? For sure. But he's a good God. And he's going to give you what you need to fulfill your assignment. But you got to do the labor. You got to do the work. It's just not going to show up in your bank account. You're just not going to touch, you know, the cryptocurrency screen on Coinbase and by osmosis understand it all. Like you're going to have to do some research and you're going to have to get this and you're going to have to read your Bible because if you do not read that word, you're going to have no idea what time you're in. This is why I stress so importantly about knowing the times that you're in so you can prepare for this stuff and not just be like, oh, they'll figure it out. <laughs> We've always had inflation. We've always had, we had an economic depression once. It recovered. This is not the same. This is an entire global reset. I don't know how else to describe it. And I'll keep talking about it until it, it comes. But this is a reset for the entire globe. Because these horses are global horses. Pre-tribulation global problems. And their whole point, the beast system's whole point in the Bible when it rises is global domination. Our job is to have dominion here. And we cannot have dominion if we don't occupy all territories. This is why I talk about systems. It's very important we have systems outside of the system. We've got to have our own grocery stores. We have to have our own airlines. We have to have our own fields and, and everything. This is why the wealth transfer is coming to the body of Christ, that are pay, the Josephs, that are paying attention, that know this system so that we can build these things for the people. Because it's going to be very hostile to the Christians. Very hostile. It's going to be very hostile to the non-Christians just because it's dominant, it's domination control on the people. We, we know what's coming out of the World Economic Forum. They're telling us in plain sight what they're planning to do. And the thing about the elite is that they don't just say something and do it immediately. They give you years to, to prepare for their global domination. And, and, and in their minds, and their wicked antichrist type of minds they feel like that's justice well in so many words and all these riddles we told them what what we were going to do you're going to own nothing and love it and everyone claps <laughs> they're telling you what they're going to do and they're telling you that we're changing the system we're going to change it we're not going to really tell you when we're going to flip the switch but we're telling you we're going to do it so either you can do it or you can just you know Oh, nothing and be happy because we warned you. No, you have a Bible that warns you. You have a Bible. Your Bible has told you so. And the Lord told us, pay attention because the ones that read that word and pay attention, they get a reward. The, the Lord says they get a reward. The ones that watched and knew the times and seasons, they were the tribe of Issachar people got the reward. And I believe it's all of you here and you guys. Since you're watching, you're still here. It's you. It's you. We're going to get it right. So, Lord, I delivered your word tonight. Father, I want to pray for these people. I want to pray, Father, 
that you give them night visions. You tell them exactly where to invest. You tell them exactly what to do with their money. Lord Jesus, you tell them exactly what they're to build. You, you tell them, Lord Jesus, I pray for visions and dreams, whispers and audible voices, Lord, that people will come into their life, that will show them the way, that you will send them people to follow, that know the system that they're, that, that, that's coming, that, that they can be taught, Lord, that you'll give them an understanding, like a, a key that's unlocked. That's what I saw in April in my dream. I saw keys falling from the sky and us grabbing them. Things being unlocked that were locked to us before. And we kept knocking and knocking and knocking and we couldn't get in. Finally, keys were falling. And we were grabbing those keys. And I was running around. I was saying, get the keys, get the keys, everybody. Finally, something's happening in April. Pray about this. Pray it through. Because we're getting mantles. We're getting keys. We're getting financial blessings. Why? To build systems. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, uh, come 2030, it will be very, very difficult to live. N things are changing forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray wisdom on everybody under the sound of my voice, Lord. I decree and declare wisdom on everyone on live and in this room tonight. Wisdom and understanding about the times that we're in. And even if they do not agree, Father, that you will give them some sense of the ability to be able to prepare and they don't even know that they're doing it. Lord Jesus, the Father that provides, the great physician, the great I am, worthy is your name, Jesus. I command all sickness to go now in Jesus' name. All infirmities you leave now in Jesus' name. Depression and anxiety under the sound of my voice you leave now in Jesus' name. The spirit of lack is coming off of the children of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy. Worthy is your name, Lord. Holy. If you do not know Jesus and you are listening to me tonight, it is imperative that you get on your knees and ask him to save you and show you the way. I am begging you that the times are changing biblically. We are there. There is no, this is not a drill. This is the real thing. And he is returning. The king is coming. I've told you, I don't know how many times. I know the times and seasons I'm in. I have been since I got baptized. I just knew where I was in time. I knew that we would be the generation that wouldn't see death. And I've been tracking it ever since. I'm telling you, he's coming. I've had dreams. My son has had dreams. I know what I'm talking about. And if you miss this, if you miss his coming, if you miss the rapture, if you do not get this, you will go down in absolute suffering. So you will suffer. And if you do make it through the tribulation and your head did not roll, you will be wishing rocks would fall on you. That is what the Bible says. No, Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, please. I preach every Friday night in hopes that I can get anybody. We're going out into the park in two weeks, and I'll be screaming there at the park. But right now, I know the people here under my voice are saved. <laughs> but I'm talking to you. There's people here that you just were unsure, and you came on because I was talking about money. But I promise you, if you're not saved, it rains on the just and unjust. You'll get your money, but it'll flow right out of your hands just like there's a hole in your back. It will. It will. It won't stay in your company long. But if you're with God, he can multiply it, hundredfold it, protect it. He'll put a hedge of protection around you and your family where the plagues die when they touch you instead of you dying when they touch you. You will walk in glory in these times with authority, mantled. People will be coming to you for answers, for help. You will become the hospital because you heal people. 
That's what the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ died to give you. He died to save you, but there's so much in that, that contract. There's so much in it. It's like, you know, you're saved, but you just live in one little tiny part of the room, and there's 30 rooms. There's so much in that blood covenant, and your authority is one of them. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord turn toward you and give you peace. Thank you, Jesus. Good night, everybody.